Legends, I hope you're all fantastic. We have the brand new Friedman IRX on the bench today. It's a two channel tube preamp pedal with a built in digital power amp simulator and cabinet IRs. It also features a mono effects loop that is switchable, a USB connection so you can hook it up to a software editor, change the IRs, load your own IRs and program presets. There's a headphone output and it also accepts MIDI program changes. There's also a switchable boost per channel and each channel has independent controls. Because this says Friedman on it, if I can't get a good sound out of this within about two minutes, I'm going to be very, very concerned for my well-being. So I've got my PRS DGT plugged straight into the IRX. We're going to start on channel two because that's the dirt channel. Don't worry, we will hear some clean sounds and I will show you how the software editor works. Basically, it's guitar straight in and I'm taking the DI out. I'm using the stock cab in cab slot number one. You can switch between them on here with the little mini toggle. The Second channel also has a tight switch, which I've got to the right at the moment. We'll have a listen to what that does. But let's just start with an A chord. <laughs> loads of gain on there. I really like the way that first IR is voiced and you've got the boost function on there. You have two little mini pots on the side that let you set the amount of gain boost per channel and then you can set the overall volume of the boost channel on there which would be great if you want a gain boost and a volume boost for your solos on there. Furthermore, if you were going to say set up a solo preset like that and you had a delay in the loop or something like that, you can set the status of the loop to be on and off per program. I'll show you how to program that later. Let's hear a different IR. I've actually loaded in my main IR that I personally use, LTTV Mix 7. It's available for free in the video description. Here's a little cab switch. I'll switch over to it and just dial this in a little bit. Then we'll go over to channel one. <laughs> I also much prefer having the tight switch on there. It's just a type of gain I like, but if you turn the tight switch to that right position on there, it's a bit 
thicker and kind of gooier sounding, which would work really, really well with single coils. Speaking of which, before we flip over to channel one, I've tapped the pickups on this guitar. So let's hear the neck tapped pickup on here. I kind of like the way this cleans up and I'll let you hear the difference between the tight switch to the left and to the right. <laughs> now I've currently got it set up for a nice chimey clean sound depending on the IR that you choose and the position of the three-way bright switch you're going to be able to get a range of different tones in here <laughs> the range of gain in there it's going from very clean with a tap neck pickup to turning the boost on for some bluesy grit and when I go to the humbucker mode I've got a kind of ACDC style tone in there you heard my IR again right at the end but I was using one of the factory cabs at the start there before we go on to the editor I'll just show you how I've got this dialed in now basically I would have channel one without the boost as my main clean sound kick in the boost for your ACDC style crunch more of a kind of 80s rock tone with channel two and then kicking the boost for full on leads. Let's hear it. but it's super easy to use and importantly fast to dial in before I show you the editor and the customizable features that it gives you I'm just going to kick in a boss SD1 in front of the gain channel here so you can hear what that does <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
software editor not only lets you add an extra layer of customization to your presets with the three-way presence and thump controls per channel and the ability to load your own IRs or select different factory IRs for the onboard cab slots, but it also lets you store presets and recall them via MIDI. So let's first have a listen to this preset that I'm using at the moment. You can see I've loaded in my free LT TV Mix 7 cab IR into this slot. I'm gonna play around with this three-way presence control and the three-way thump control, just so you can hear the impact on there. This is going to shape the overall feel and tonal response of that power amp simulator in there. I'll start off with both of them in the middle position and we'll have a listen to what they do. Basically, you've got a slightly brighter and darker option for the presence, and then you've got a slightly tighter and chunkier option for the thump control. <laughs> Preferred settings are with the presence generally in the middle and then depending on where I've got the tight control, if I've got the tight control on, I like the thump control all the way up. It's got that nice modern style thing where you're kind of cutting bass pre-gain and then boosting it post-gain. But if you like the tight control being all the way to the right in the off position, I would generally go a little bit lighter with the thump. This is also gonna depend on how you set the pedal up and what IR you choose. On that, there are a bunch of great sounding factory IRs in here. For example, if I come up to cab slot number one, let's hit plus over here and you can see that I can cycle through a bunch of different factory IRs and they've each got pretty in-depth descriptions on the type of speakers, mics and preamps used along with the general cabinet info. So let's select this particular 1960 green 5757-121 IR. I'll make sure that it's on. I'll just cycle through a few of them. <laughs> Like that 6402-57-121 mix. That's probably my favorite dirty cab in there. Although I do like that I can load my own IRs in there and I'm pretty partial to my own IR. Again, 
can grab my IIRs in the video description for free if you want to try them for yourself. You can also hear the effect that different cabs have on the overall vibe in there using one of those Boogie V30 cabs immediately made it sound a lot more aggressive and metal for use of a better term, whereas using some of the Greenback cabs or this EV cab had way more of a vintage vibe. I love the EV for the clean channel. And you can also see on here that I can engage the effects loop using the IRX editor as well. So I've got a Boss DSD3 in there. I'll just play around with this EV IR for a little bit on the neck pickup of this guitar and then I'll bring the pedal in. So it's currently engaged, but the loop is bypass. <laughs> Once you've got your desired settings and the status of the presence and thump controls, as well as the boost and a loop status in there, you can just hit store. You can see I am storing this to program zero, and this would just be my main rock rhythm tone. The loop is bypassed, the boost is off. But if I wanted to say, turn the boost on and turn the effects loop on, I could save that to another program. And I've done that just over here. You can see basically the same settings, but the boost is on and the loop is on. So I can switch between them. I'm doing it with the editor, but if you had this on a pedal board, you would do it with MIDI. <laughs> Also heard a clean preset and a kind of dirtier preset out of channel one on there. You can set the presence and thump controls per channel. You can set the different IR selection per channel as well. And furthermore, you would have heard in there that the preset changes are seamless as well. So there's no dropouts. Also, because it's MIDI capable, there's 128 onboard presets that you can save in there. That's all for today. I will play you out with some more absolute filth in a second, but I think the real strong points of this are that it's so quick to get dialed in and it's really easy to use if you're somebody who is used to using, say, strictly digital modeling products or you've already got a complex pedal board with multiple drives. You're going to be able to wrap your head around this really easily if you're somebody just kind of dipping their toes into the water of a direct solution and you want something that just kind of feels and responds more like an amp, you're going to want to check this out. The other thing that I like as well is that the built-in cabs are really finely tuned. You know, one thing that Dave Friedman is renowned for, aside from building amps and so many other things like building celebrity rock star rigs, is that he's got a great ear and having those hand selected IRs in there kind of takes the option paralysis out of cabinet IRs in there. And I think for a lot of guitar players, it's one of those things where often we don't want to trust our own ears and we want to know like, oh, you know, Dave knows what's up and Dave selected these and put them in a pedal. So I'm going to be happy using them. For me, I've spent so many hours going down that rabbit hole myself that with a pedal like this, if the built-in IRs are good, that's a bonus, but I'm probably going to end up using my own IRs anyway, which you can load in with the software as we saw. And other than that, 
I like it. I'm going to build a board around this and do a build over the next couple of weeks. Maybe chuck it on there with an H90 and a boost pedal up the front. Furthermore, of course, you could disable the cabs in here and run it to a flat solid state power amp, or you could take the effect send out and send it to a tube power amp and have this as basically a preamp on your pedal board that's easy to tweak. That's it from me. I want to hear from you now. Let me know your thoughts on this particular pedal and how you like the tones. Is this the sort of direct solution you've been looking for or are you still going to look elsewhere? Big shout out to Stefan and the team at Synergy and Boutique Amps for sending this one over to me in advance so I could make this video. If you like what I'm doing here on the channel or you want to get my free IRs, support me directly. Just check the video description below. Otherwise, have a great day and I'll see you next time.